Coach will get us started, and then we'll open it up for questions. All right, um, a lot, a lot to talk about. Obviously, um, uh, sign a day is a great day of celebration, and and um, certainly want to spend time with that. Also excited too to have um, Tim back with us a new, as a new offensive coordinator, um, and uh, excited for what he brings, his experience, the success that they've had at New Mexico State. Um, there's a lot uh, to unpack there, so I'm, I'm excited to talk about that. Talk about the the signees um, from today, and and um, you know again, I think in in what used to be a day of chaos has become really kind of a day of some calm waters amongst a bunch of chaos around it. And um, as we continue to build this roster out and build this team out, uh, certainly we want to stay committed to developing high school players in our program. Um, and we brought some some good one good ones in today. Um, that's an effort that um, I, I, you know, there are a lot of people to, to show gratitude toward for that. Obviously our recruiting office and their efforts in organizing um, our recruiting weekends and our path forward, um, our scouting office with respect to the evaluation of the talent and um, in starting the process of finding players that can uh, succeed uh, at the SEC level out there. Obviously our coaching staff who works hard uh, to foster relationships and build authenticity into the process for us um, and um, and so many others who, who uh, contribute to our efforts to have a day of celebration which is what we're doing today um, this is also marks kind of the end of the the fall and winter for us and a, a, a point at which we can turn the page and look forward to um, to 2024 and um, and so I'm excited to do that also uh, with that I'm happy to open up for questions uh, it seems like that kind of goes against the previous hires that you've made, and that he's older. And I'm not aware of you having known him before, or you know, in the past you've hired people that your friends have recommended. Uh, so why did you go against those two trends? Well, I, I don't want to offend Tim. I don't know that he's that old, Robbie. So we're going to let him keep his youth. Uh, I'm just kidding. He is old. Um, no, I, I to me it was um, yeah, a, a part of you know. I think when you look at what's what's a, how we've evolved here. There's been a fight for retention, a fight for retention of systems, um, and not not to go too far into that, but I mean certainly I think that the first part in plotting a course forward is to say, hey, you know, what what were the decisions that got us to this point, and and how were they effective in some ways, and how maybe in some ways were they ineffective? Um, the goal is always to to try to raise your program within the building. I mean, I, I do believe that. Um, and I think in, in this day and age, you know, um, I, I want coaches to move on and I want them to have opportunities. And I want to be fair to our players and try to keep language and systems as close to similar as possible. Um, and, and that's all in an effort to compound learning and, and it's a part of this developmental approach. But, you know, I think within that too, um, I saw enough this fall to say that I needed to make a, a change that's maybe divergent from what we've done in our hiring processes in the past, where we've stayed more in-house or we've elevated from within, um, you know, we needed, we needed to, to have some change. And that's not an effort to reset, it's an effort to rebound um, and to get back on the rails of progress. As far as, you know, I spoke with, um, I know Aria, you were in the office and we, we, we talked a little bit about kind of what were the things we're looking for. There were six measurements we were using to guide this search, um, and, and those are analytical uh, in nature. But the first thing was an offense that can con control the game. Um, it's a formula, but um, you know that's first down efficiency, third down efficiency, that's finishing drives with touchdowns. You know That, that demonstrated expertise that way. I've talked a lot post-game about the need to shorten the game offensively. Um, to play complementary football. We needed to see that in this hire. Um, the second measure was red zone effectiveness, uh, scoring points in the red zone. The third was establishing a run game. You know, it's something we fell short on this year. Um, I wanted to see demonstrated success running the ball. Um, off that, the, the fourth measure is an explosive passing game, you know, and using the run action to set up um, shots down the field. We want to get the passing game going. We believe in our receiver skill. Um, the fifth is we wanted to have a quarterback-friendly system. I thought at times 
uh, in our past, the past couple seasons, that we've asked too much of that position. I think there's a there's an in between um, where you know you're not quite um, you know counting on that position like it's a 10 year vet. You know, obviously it's evolved a little bit from from what that position plays in high school, but there's there's a space in between where we can be complex and we can um, stretch them in terms of their abilities, but. If you're not playing fast and decisive at that position, you're setting yourself up to get off schedule offensively. Um, and ultimately, when you talk about getting the quarterback hit and getting the quarterback sacked, um, you're, you're, you're eliminating the ability to score points. Um, and so for that position to play fast, play free, to be decisive and be direct, I think also wanting to create a, a situation where you can have a problem solver at that position too. How do we extend plays, um, convert on third down with our legs, and then also developing a run game around the quarterback that, that can be, that can keep a defense off balance where they have to defend all 11 players on the field. Um, and then finally, um, you know, I was interested in looking at a demonstrated success with respect to playing error free. So uh, negative yards plays, turnovers, and penalties wanted to wanted to find someone that had a history of of um, limiting those things I think with with Tim and the success um, that Jerry's had at New Mexico State I think what you look at is uh, a group that's learned how to do um, a whole lot with what they have and and find success um, in, in, in for that program and historic to historic levels um, that was really appealing to me too you know I, I I want to bring people into this program that that see it for what is good in it, not for you know what has held us back in our past, but uh, uh, the the things that define this as a unique situation and an opportunity for us to build something special. Um, Tim is cut from that cloth, um, and he's hit the ground running in that respect. So uh, I love his experience. I love the fact that he has head coaching experience. Um, I think that I'm going to lean on him to be the head coach of the offense as I take on more responsibilities defensively uh, and um, ultimately um, you know we, we found the guy that that um, that we need to lead that offense forward and um, hopefully that answers the question um, you know the quarterbacks that you're signing today with Witt and Jeremy they were obviously recruited under the previous offensive coordinator so how do you see them fitting into Tim Beck's system and into the new you know, offense? Well, um, I think they're going to fit in really well. I mean, I think what Tim has done um, in his career is, you know, certainly build around aspects of that position. I, I don't know that it, it, it's any one skill set. You, know, um, you know, he's coached guys that have thrown the ball well. He's coached guys that have run the ball well. Um, some of the run game is not necessarily just being able to pull the ball and outrun people. It's uh, creating gap schemes and um, and just to me, the offense is about staying on schedule. It's about first and ten becoming second and six, becoming a third, a convertible third down, um, and 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 supporting that quarterback uh, through through an effective run game. And so both these guys, first of all, Jay and Witt both have athleticism, and they're both um, they're both good in terms of moving the pocket and and creating uh, with their legs. They they both can throw the ball. They're both great competitors. Um, and I and I believe that they're they're both going to find success here in the new system. Dante Carter is one of the highest ranked recruits Vanderbilt has ever signed. Uh, it doesn't seem like he really looked around much this fall. Uh, how were you guys able to get him signed, and and what is he potentially going to bring as a freshman? Well, we've need we've needed improved play, um, you know, in in the back end of our defense. And Dante's a guy that we think can come in and have a an immediate impact that way he's going to have to earn it and he knows that um, nothing will be given to him but we uh, we believe in his abilities I love his mentality you know, I think part of um, the uh, the last couple of years and certainly this cycle has been um, has been the moving on or the removal of certain aspects of the program so that we can move forward um, you know uh, we're shedding old skin so to speak and what he brings in with respect to his mindset, his mentality, his competitive nature, I think is going to um, build into the nucleus of this team, which um, you know we're here to win. It's what we're here to do. And obviously, we're, we're not happy with this season, but we're anxious to turn the page and, and to, to build again around that mindset of, uh, of winning, a winning approach. Um, 
Dante brings that. Um, he's got spirit and energy. You know, he's he's um, connected with our program authentically. Um, recruiting can be a crazy process, and I think there's a lot of um, you know, hard selling that goes on out there. I think there's a lot of uh, persuasive language, um, and what we try to do um, is be genuine to who we are and um, to make it about the person first, to be authentic in what our plan is and what our vision is, both for the individual and for the program itself. Um, and we, we just we try to connect at a level of depth with each player that we recruit. Um, because inevitably, for all these guys, there's going to be adversity. You know, it's personal adversity or team adversity. Um, you know, we want to make sure they know that they're going to have a program that's going to challenge them but support them. And, and um, in those moments of adversity that we're, we're going to be locked in arms and leaning on that relationship that we built at the start of the process. Um, and Dante and his family have become a, a really close part of our family. And, um, you know, this is where he wants to play and this is where he wants to win. And he's got a chip on his shoulder just like I do. And so, um, yeah, it just it, it, it made sense. and, and um, I don't know that it, it was, uh, you know, people are motivated by different things, but Dante's coming here to help us win and help this program get to where it can go. Uh, how satisfied have you been with, you know, the quarterback recruiting and the transfer portal that you guys have done? Um, I've been pleased. Uh, I can't comment specifically, which I appreciate how you phrased the question. I, <clears throat> um, I think we're going to be in a really good uh, position that way, and I'd be remiss not to not to talk about Drew Dickey in that same sentence. You know, I mean, Drew's a guy that, um, you know, I, I have so much respect for as a competitor. And, you know, as he, as he was here and, um, you know, not wavering on his commitment to what he wants to build here and, and what he wants to be a part of and the belief he has in what we're doing, you know, we, we've shared a couple of nice moments where he's said to me, coach, you bring in whoever you want, I'm going to beat him out. You know, that's the mentality that you want within your team. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm excited for Drew uh, to get connected with Tim and to start building um, his path forward in this program. I'm excited to, to bring along some others that will make that quarterback room ultra competitive because we need for each position in this program to be fueled by competition. We don't want anyone entitled to anything. Um, one of our covenants is earn it every day. We want that to define the process that we um, that a player finds the field and finds their role. And so um, I'm, I'm excited about how we're building that room out um, and what it'll look like in the spring and certainly in the fall too as we add our freshmen. I know you've got particular metrics that you look for athletically at every position. How, how do these guys compare across the board to what you've signed in the past? Well, I think with each year we come into a little more focus as to what it is. You know, I think part of that is just our um, – our commitment deepens to what we what we know in terms of the culture add, the mentality of the the player and his his uh, support system, um, and certainly the the physical and athletic measures too. This group is long. You know, I think we we addressed skill positions um, on offense. You know, we wanted to to start um, the process of turning the the. Um, the receiver room over, and we did that in this class. Obviously, with with the portal this this winter, we've you know we've also had to go and and recruit some some guys uh, to transfer in, in those roles too. But uh, we're really excited about the skill we built at receiver. Obviously, the running back position we were able to add. We did that a year ago too. Um, but when you look at the whole of this class, you see length and athleticism um, and. There is like um, some underdeveloped frames where there's going to need time taken to build out and to physically equip. But um, you know, we, we think there are a number of guys in this class that can have an immediate impact, and um, you know, we believe strongly that a number of these guys are going to be um, developed to all SEC level players, and so it's exciting. Um, and again, coming off a tough season. One of the things that's given me great energy um, is being out on the road the last few weeks and just being around these guys and being around their families, you know, and, and just hearing them talk about the vision and hearing them inspired to be a part of it um, makes me really excited again about each cycle's a chance to move the program forward. And, and I feel like we did that both in mentality in this class, but also in the physical attributes too. What's your vision for Witt 
Edwards as a, as a player? And I, are his rodeo days done? Or uh, what's wrong with that? <laughs> um, I, I hope his rodeo days are done. I don't know. That's uh, some maybe unnecessary risks to take on. Um, Wit's, uh, you know, first of all, you, you, to know Wit, you have to know his family, and it's it's a it's a support group unlike many that I've been around. I mean, I, I'm impressed with. Um, probably the most people I've ever been around on an in-home visit um, and how supportive and how loving they are to Witt. Um, he is uh, a very talented player that really could play on either side of the ball. You know, we've recruited him uh, primarily to be a, a tight end. Um, he's also needing to fill his frame out. And so I think there's a world where you could see the entry point for him on this team, you know, in the tight end room, but certainly in more of a um, a flex tight end or a kind of a receiving tight end role as he works to build that frame out. Um, but um, whatever the case, he's a dynamic athlete that's long and competitive. And um, I'm excited to, you know, use his strengths and see where he lands for us in the fall because I think that he could help us win games. Uh, you know, on the quarterback situation again, with neither of the incoming freshmen early enrolling, are you planning to have one or more transfers that are going to be here for spring ball? We are, yes. How many more spots for January do you have? We are right up against the number. And so, um, you know, there's one or two, um, but um, it, it's, it all comes down to the wire here for us. Um, recruiting Whit Muschamp, uh, you know, how much was talking with his dad a part of that recruitment? Did you know Will previously? Um, no, I, I obviously I have a ton of respect for Will. I, I, you know, I, I admired him as I was coming up as a, a defensive coach um, and uh, respected his body of work, um, but never really had a chance to interact with him. You know, I first had that opportunity when they came unofficially on a visit. Um, I've, I've met Witt's mom a few times. He's come to our camps and competed in camp. Um, it's a great family. And I love recruiting, um, you know, coaches' kids because they understand the game at a level. They've lived the game out, you know, and, and certainly um, Wit has done that with Will. Um, I have built a friendship with Will and um, have enjoyed that, you know, and it's been a lot of fun to have him connected to our program. Um, we had a blast with him when he was on the official visit. And, you know, it's a, it's a guy that, um, again, I have a ton of respect for. But um, certainly um, the way Witt plays the game, you can see um, that, that uh, the, uh, the imprint or the fingerprints that his dad has had on his competitive nature and his understanding of football, you know. And that's exciting for us because that will only develop as, as um, as we move forward. And, um, you know, Witt's going to have a chip on his shoulder and want to beat his dad when the time comes, which I'm excited for, too. Anything else? Where are you on strength and conditioning, Coach? Um, we are, we, we have a candidate and we've, that we've targeted, and we are in the processes of finalizing that. And I'm excited for it. And um, as soon as, that gets finalized officially, I'll make sure that we get a release out and that um, I can talk more about it. Now, that, that's an area of this program that needs to be, needs to function at, at highest level. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I've got a candidate that's going to do that for us. And, and again, I'm fired up for it. Was there, you, you mentioned throughout the season, like the injuries and the training methods, like looking at them, where they could improve. Is that strength and conditioning or is that? Something else. Well, I think to to pin it on one area is probably to is probably a little um, you know um, careless. I think that, that we we apply resources uh, and, and support in a number of areas, whether that's you know nutrition, athletic training, certainly strength and conditioning, and it's the collaboration of those areas that, to me, ultimately um, delivers the players to a healthy experience, both physically healthy and mentally healthy. Um, but yeah, we, we, you know, part of the evaluation is say, what, where did we miss in um, the process leading into fall camp? You know, and, and because it was within the first week of fall camp that we were experiencing these issues. And I think you can also apply some ownership within the way we 
we train with, with our coaching staff too, but um, part of addressing the strength and conditioning program is to address just the culture that's built or not built in that room, um, how that room galvanizes your team um, and, and forms the spirit and the soul of your program. Um, part of it also is to address, you know, how we train our team and, and prepare them for, you know, fall camp and practice, but certainly for the length of the season. We need to be better that way. What about Jamal Richardson? I uh, encourage you to promote him, and then then you're going to need a safeties coach. Is that, you know, since you're taking over defensive coordinator, do you want, like, kind of a veteran who can help you out there, or what's your thought process? Yeah, I, the staff needs to, needs to kind of take form around the idea that, I'm going to be wearing a couple of hats. And so um, we're going to take our time with that, or I should say the time we need to make sure that it, it feels right and it fits. Um, as far as Jamal goes, I think one of the, you know, one of the things I, I said early in my career, and I, I don't know where I've heard this, and I'm sure, certainly it's not unique to me, but it's this idea that every day is an interview. And every day that you come to work, you're interviewing for the job that you want. Um, and I've been super impressed with Jamal, just with respect to his the boundaries he puts in place, the way he holds players accountable, the relationships, again, the genuine relationships he's built. I think you've seen that also apply in recruiting as well. Um, you know, he and um, Jimmy Thompson, who was out on the road for us too, just with staffing turnover, you have the opportunity to send some of your young staff out. They, uh, they log more flight miles in the last few weeks than I can even imagine. Um, and I was with Jamal in San Antonio and we were going to see the Carters and I think he had just uh, driven in the car from with, with AJ Blazik um, for you know six hours or something through the night. And um, he went to Houston and again met me in San Antonio and I I asked him um, how he was doing. He said he was having the time of his life, you know, and so um, a six hour ride with AJ Blazik and, and um, you know, going from Houston to San Antonio and just that constant grind of recruiting. Um, he, he's got something special about him. He's a young coach that, that has shown signs of really being an effective communicator, a relationship builder, and a recruiter. And it's my responsibility now to help him grow into a great technician and tactician uh, to help us win games. Thanks.